Father, go ahead and prepare, amen, for our lesson on this evening. And the title of our lesson, I'm just going to go ahead and give you the title, is The Danger of Self-Confidence. The Danger of Self-Confidence. Let us all bow for a word of prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus, first of all, just to say thank you. Now, Lord, I pray right now, Father God, that you would just use us, oh God, as your instrument, even as we teach your word. I pray, God, that it would touch the hearts and minds of your people. Continue, Lord God, to strengthen us even as we go through this pandemic, oh God, and even as we go through those things, that, oh God, that even have attacked our own families. Yes, we God. bind the devil in the name in of the Jesus. Name of and Jesus. God, we ask you, Lord God, to continue to have your way. We yes, just God. lose healing. We lose deliverance. We lose salvation. It's in Jesus' name Jesus that we name. pray. Amen. 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 The danger of self-confidence. Now, self-confidence is really taught today as a necessary survival skill in order to cope and deal with some issues in this life. Yes, yes, children are taught even in school to be more tolerant of others, to love who they are, and to express whatever they are feeling down deep inside, even if those feelings are not of God. If you feel that you like a, a, a boy and you're a little boy, it's okay. That's the way you're made. That's the ways of this world. If a child seems to be shy or they ex exhibit humility, we tend to say that they have low self-esteem or they have little or no self-confidence. But, but James here, he challenges this belief by firmly promoting the biblical value of relying on God and not yourself. You see, according to James' view, and we're going to see it tonight, all self-confidence is boastful and arrogant and evil. So our lesson tonight is coming from James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Just a, a few verses, amen? And once again, the title is The Danger of Self-Confidence. Somebody just type self-confidence, self-confidence. Looking at our text here in uh, the book of James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17, it, it says, Come now, you who say... Today or tomorrow we will go to such a such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? Is it even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away? Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance, and all such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Now, there's a familiar passage in the Bible, even coming from the Gospel of Luke, that kind of aligns with the lesson tonight. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 20, it talks about a rich man who owned plenty of land and crops and, and cattle. And he, they continued to multiply to the point where he had no more room to store them. So he said to himself, what shall I do? I have so much, but so little room. What shall I do? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and build bigger ones. And I'll say to myself, self you have made so much money, you have so much land, you have so many servants and cattle. Relax, retire, take it easy. Yes, eat, drink, and be merry because you have arrived. But then God spoke to him and said, you fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall all of these things be which thou hast provided? Now, this is the same thing that happens to those who lay up treasures on earth for themselves, but is not rich toward God. We're talking about the danger of self-confidence, self, self, me, me, myself, and I, I did it, my money, my house, mm -hmm. my children, mm -hmm. my job, my, 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 my. But looking at our text this evening, James kind of 
breaks this down by using something familiar that we can relate to. Yes, at the beginning of our text that we just read in James uh, 4 verses 13, James uses the example of a businessman. Yes, yes, and like many businessmen, he, he, he makes travel plans and, and he market projections and he has time frames set out and his profit margins are all calculated. But, but, but where is God in all of this planning? Have you ever been guilty planning out your life, mapping out your life, what you want to do with your life, what you want to become, what school you want to go to, what time you want to retire, this, this, this. But how often do we leave God out of the equation? And so that's what James is showing here. You see, instead of involving God in his planning, he is full of self-confidence. And according to verse 16 in our text, James says he's arrogant and evil and boastful. Now, now don't get me wrong here because there's nothing wrong with making plans. But, but we must always include God in our planning if we want to be truly successful and pleasing in the sight of God. So here, James deals with the issue of self-confidence as he gives us some practical reasons why we should trust and rely on God and not on ourselves. And the first reason we need to rely on God is number one, because we do not know what's gonna happen tomorrow. No, none of us know what tomorrow will bring. You see, God can see the future, but we can't. Yes, he still sits high and he looks down low. In heaven is his throne and on earth is his footstool. And his thoughts, amen, are not our thoughts, nor his ways are our ways. So even as the heavens are higher than the earth, even so God's ways are higher than our, ours. So you see, none of us have the wisdom to see ahead, to see the future, to know the future, or even the power to control the future. Only God can do that. That's why we need to learn how to lean and depend on him because he knows what lies ahead. I'm talking about the danger of self-confidence. Somebody just type self-confidence, self-confidence. So the first reason why we must rely on God is because, number one, he knows what's in the future. But, but, but secondly, the reason why we must rely on God is because life is like a vapor. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what James said. He says, what is your life? It's, it's, it's like a vapor. Well, what, what's a vapor? Well, I think a lot of young people nowadays are trying to smoke but they're using a smoking alternative. They call it vaping. Vaping is when you get some coals and you light them and you get a flavor and you actually smoke and you blow out the smoke. But the smoke is only there for a short time. Uh, let me give you a better example. Have you, you remember during the winter time, um, mornings when, when, when it's really cold or icy, your breath is foggy and steamy. And whenever you breathe out, you can actually see your own breath. But then what happens next? Well, it's there for a few minutes, but, but then it's gone. Not even a few minutes, a few moments. Mm -hmm. And then it's gone. And that's exactly what James is saying about this life. It's like a vapor, like smoke. It's here one minute and gone the next. When you look at life and you measure this life and align it with eternity, what is this life? Yes, life is short. Life is unpredictable and no one knows the day nor the hour when they will depart from this life. And that's where wisdom comes in. Oh yes, having a godly mindset because this life that we're living on earth is only temporary. Oh, I say it all the time. We're living this life just to live again. This is just a rehearsal. When we get to heaven, we will really sing. Yes, life is short. 
And James says it's like a vapor. But then the third thing James, James tells us to do as we learn to rely on God is that we should always have the right kind of attitude. You got to have the right attitude. Yes, in verse 15, James says to us, he says, say this right here. If the Lord wills, we will go do this or that. That's the right mindset when you set out to do something, when you plan to do something. If the Lord wills. Now, this isn't a special formula or something that we're commanded to say all the time, but rather it's a sense of dependency. It's saying, I'm depending on God. I'm, I'm, I'm trusting him with the outcome. Amen. Because I truly don't believe for one minute that God expects us to just walk around all the time saying, if it's the Lord's will, uh, hey, I'll see you tonight. <laughs> if the Lord will, <laughs> Or I'll meet you at the movies if the Lord wills. Or I'll see you tomorrow if the Lord wills. No, that's not what James means here. But what he does mean is that we all have to recognize that all of our plans are ultimately in the hands of God. Amen. He controls it. Making major moves. That's why you should pray before you take a spouse. Pray before you move to another city. Pray before you change jobs, pray because God is still in control. We cannot control the events of this life. But the good news is that God, he has a plan and he has a purpose for all of our lives. But our plans must constantly be submitted to his plan. Lord, do you really want me to go this way? Lord, do you want me to go that way? Amen. And the scripture tells us whether we go to the right or to the left, our ears will hear a voice saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Just think about the prophet Jonah for a minute, who was running away from God. Yes, he made his own plans to go to Tarshish when God told him to go to Nineveh and preach his word. But Jonah discovered the hard way. That no matter what our plans are, God can intervene and, and do get done whatever he wants to get done. Yes, God is sovereign. In other words, he can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. If he decides to use you, amen, he can use. If he decides to stop using you, he can stop. We just have to submit ourselves, su submit our plans, submit our decisions, so submit every major move to God just to make sure that's what he wants us to do. And God will confirm and he'll honor you because you trusted him with the outcome or with the decision. We're talking about the danger of self-confidence. Somebody say self-confidence, self-confidence. Self so then James, he kind of concludes this chapter by giving us some practical insight when it comes to the will of God. Now, I told you this past Sunday, and y'all have heard it before, that, that God's word is his will, and his will is his word. But the most important thing we need to know about the will of God is the fact that God wants us to know it. Yes, he wants us to know his will. God ain't trying to, to hide anything from us. As a matter of fact, the Bible admonishes us to seek the Lord while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call upon the Lord. And he said, I'll show you great and marvelous and wonderful things that ye knew not, know not of. So he wants us to call on him. He wants us to seek him. And he tells us if we seek, we shall Fine. So it's important to know what the will of God is for your life. Yes, Colossians 1 and 9, it says, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Oh, there are benefits in knowing the will of God. Yes, Ephesians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. But then James, he ends this chapter here in verse 17 by saying this. This is so simple, 
but yet so profound. And we're almost through, y'all. He says, therefore, to him who knows to do good mm. Mm. and does not do it, to him it is sin. Now, a lot of people get off. You, you can sin out of ignorance. And that's what Paul said. He began to talk about, you know what? I went against the will of God out of ignorance. But when I came to the knowledge of the truth, my life changed. Amen. And he called himself the least of all the apostles. So, so to him who knows to do good, but don't do it. Shame. To him is sin. Mm -mm. You see, man tends to think that doing wrong is sin. But here James tells us that sin is also not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. now, now, these are two kinds of sins that are often called the sins of commission and the sins of omission. Yes, it's a sin to lie. But it's also a sin to know the truth, but not tell it. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. I hope I'm helping somebody. Amen. Yes, Amen. It, it's a sin to speak evil of someone. But it's also a sin to avoid him or her when you know they need your help mm -hmm. or you know God is telling you to reach out to them. See, if God is leading you to help somebody or to forgive somebody or to restore a relationship with somebody, you must obey the Holy Spirit and just do it. Because if not, to you, it is sin. Because if the truth be told, it's not even about us anyway. It's all about him and his mission and what he's a trying to accomplish here in the earth. So in closing, we must understand that being self-sufficient or having self-confidence and relying on yourself is a terrible sin in the sight of God. You see, down through the ages, man has always believed that he is the master of his faith. He is the captain of his soul. And there's a clear contrast between God's way and the ways of the world. Yes, the world says, look within yourself for the answer. But God says, look to me. I am the answer. The world says in order to get a, a head in life, you need to find yourself and express who you really are. Mm. But God says in his word that you must lose yourself mm. in order to truly find out who you really are. Yes, the world says trust in yourself. The Bible says trust in God. The right word now. says believe in yourself. The Bible says believe in God. The world says you're beautiful, you're, you're wonderful, you're special. But the Bible, the Bible says, y'all oh, help me, All right, now. that you are a sinner. And unless you repent mm -hmm. and accept Christ, you will perish and die in your sins. My God, My the world God. says discover how wonderful you are. But the Bible says find out how wonderful God is. Yes, he's wonderful. The world says, you just need to change your attitude. <clears throat> but the Bible says, no, you need a change of heart. Mm -hmm. The world says that poor self-esteem and having poor self-confidence is wrong. But the Bible says, self-confidence and highly esteeming your own self is a sin before God. You see, it's good to have goals. But goals will disappoint us if we leave God out. In the end, they will disappoint us. It's good to make plans, but just make sure that, that God is at the center of your planning. Yes, God is truly our future. God is our hope. He's our strength. He's our help. He's our all in all, especially during times like these, y'all. Don't put your trust in man. Don't put your trust in the government. But watch this. James said, don't even put your trust in yourself. No, my brothers and sisters, we have to trust in God. <clears throat> <clears throat> Therefore, our confidence cannot be in ourselves, but our confidence must be in God. 
My time is up and I thank God for yours. Come on, put your hands together. <coughs> y'all made me try to preach, y'all.